Well, welcome back, friends, to another portion of the show. Welcome back, folks. We are going to, uh, I got to inspect in this thing down inside where that humidifier leaked into it and uh, found two loose braces. That's all. I've checked all of the braces. What's well, only got, he's got two on the back. And there are several on the bottom side of the top. And uh, the lower part, down in the lower portion here, so right here's the center, the lower half of both back braces are loose. In fact, here's you a couple of pictures of it. You can see both of them are loose. Uh, uh, not all the way to the end of the brace. The ends of the braces, oddly enough, are still glued. So I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a knife. I don't have it out here right now. Look who's here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut to the ends of those braces loose so I can get them up and get under there with sandpaper and clean out as good as I can. And then I'm going to pour glue into this cup, suck it up into this little device, and I can get back in there and get glue between the braces and the back. And I'm going to use these little props I made for guitars, just happen to be the right sizes, to uh, stick them in there against the brace and twist it just a little bit. And that, that's like uh, putting, a, putting a jack in there or putting a clamp on it. It puts uh, pressure, you know, on the brace tightly. It's going to squeeze out some glue. We're going to wipe that out. But uh, it'll assure we get a good tight bond. So that's what we're doing today. We're gluing braces today. And I'm uh, going to put this little jewel back together and make her sing again. So I can't really show you much of that because of the, the way the hole's made. It's, a, it's an oval shaped hole. You saw it in the other video. And you know, by the time I get my arm back in there and try to see what I'm doing with the flashlight trying to get in there too, or I might put a light inside of it. Maybe something like uh, this right here. Put this lead inside of there and turn it on. And, but anyways, I'm not going to be able to show you this. All I can do is, uh, you saw what the braces look like now. I'm going to cut the ends of them loose and get in there with sandpaper and, you know, clean up the brace in the back and then glue it. And I'll bring you back, bring you over closer and show you the work, I guess, because that's all I can do. So cue ball's ready to go to work. So let's do it. Let's do it. Well, it is hard to get back in that hole with a light and a camera both. That's the brace in the far back that you see. We got good squeeze out. I got to get in there and wipe that out pretty quick, but I wanted to show you. I wiped it out once and then tightened the brace and more squeeze out came. And here's the other one. Good squeeze out there too. I sanded between the, I sanded the bottom of the brace and the back where the brace will bond. Cleaned all that out good on both braces. So yeah, man, that's what it looked like now, right now. Let me give that 24 hours or so. Maybe 12, because I'm not going to string this thing up for a while yet. Got to make a saddle for it. Uh, I'll get that tape off there and get it out. Anyways, uh, hold on. So he wants a new saddle made for this. Here's the old saddle. 10 stringer. And here's a uh, buffalo horn blink is what the, this is. And he wants a new saddle made out of the buffalo horn blank, which is almost the right size right now. It's a little bit too thick. Uh, the saddle, I was just looking at it. Measure both sides of it. It's 121 thousandths right there. And 117 thousandths. 114 thousandths, 115. Uh, I'm going to uh, hone that thing down to about 125 thousandths. It's going to be too thick to go in the slot, but I can work it down slowly from that and get a good tight fit that way. So, y'all, yeah, man. I don't know how much of this I'm going to be able to show you because i got to go up in the shop and uh, 
that's where the sander and, and the saws and stuff is and it's cold outside and that camera battery it doesn't do very good in cold it doesn't last very long in cold so probably not even going to take the camera up there but anyways uh, I'll try to show you as much as I can or I might come back and have a saddle made cue balls here uh, anyways let's go to work on this buffalo horn blake saddle yeah I know baby let's go well, welcome back again, folks. All right, I went up in the shop and I got it roughed out. There's the uh, buffalo bone. This is the original here. Uh, I got the right width. I need to get the thickness of the thing now. This way. So I just brought the sander down here with me. I'll move you over here closer, show you what's going on, so you can give you an idea how I'm doing this. Now, I don't have a lot of the tools that I need, obviously. So I'm going to take this sander, got a sand sucking device rigged up here, and I'm going to take the sander, I'm just going to lay the, uh, the uh, saddle down like that and hold it, and uh, you know, check it every little bit really frequently because that's pretty rough sandpaper. That's going to eat this buffalo bone up pretty good, or horn I guess it is, same difference, I don't know. I'm not a buffalo expert. I'm just going to hold it like this and uh, take a little bit of time. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Looking good. It's not done yet. I want to get it really smooth, but you can see here. Uh, we are very, very close. See that? I think it's going to look a lot better than this white. I don't know. That's bone. Yeah. Some kind of bone. And I'm going to sand this down smoother. Uh, that rough... Uh, belt on that thing to really put some marks in it so I want to sand it down smooth to get rid of those marks and there you have it folks a buffalo horn saddle now I still got to cut these uh, intonation grooves in it where the strings go I don't know if you can see that I think you can it's intonated I got to do this one that way but look it turned out pretty good you can see it looks pretty decent so let's uh, get to intonating it I'm just going to cut the same cut it the same directions the this one is and this one hold on right now I'm just filing those notches into the uh, the uh, where the strings rest across the saddle and uh, the way I'm doing that I'm lining up both saddles and then I'm putting this uh, clamp right beside where I want to file the notch. I've got a file here and uh, I'm just getting the side of the file against the uh, side of the clamp here against the side of the file and that enables me to keep it flat and straight not flat but straight and just run the whole thing parallel to the uh, to the clamp I don't know if you can see that or not I'm just cutting a pretty good groove into it right there in fact that's just about good enough hold on okay starting on the next one you can see that one there I just did I'm going to do this next one I, I moved the clamp over and I've got it clamped right exactly where I want the file to stop so all I got to do now is put the the clamp against the side of the file here and uh, 
slowly start giving it this number. Mysteriously enough, this file is exactly the width of the uh, the uh, slots in the old saddle. I thought that that was pretty cool. Things usually don't turn out that nice for me, so that was welcome. So, anyways, that's what I'm doing now. I'm just putting the intonation slants or whatever you want to call them into the saddle just like the old one had same directions as the old one on each string now you can see it's starting to form a, gro a groove or a channel I don't know what you call that what you would call it but that's what's going on at the house I never sleeps today you don't have to press hard you don't have to do it slow or fast just Relax. Just make sure that the uh, clamp stays against the side of the file here and you'll be okay. And try to keep, you know, as close to the same angle on every one as you can. There, I think you can see it happening. Call that good. Hold on. How many of y'all know what this is? Let me back the camera off a little bit. It's got a bunch of blades there. Okay, see that? Plenty of blades there. We've got uh, finer tooth blades on the other end. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to see how many of you were here when I used this before. I used to use this to cut. Uh, uh, well, I still do. To cut slots out in a new nut that I made, which is basically what I'm using it for now, only it's a saddle. And uh, it's not used for this at all. That's not, <laughs> not even what it's for. But man, it works dandy for this. I've used it for a lot of years. Usually I use it just to get the nut slot started. And then I switch to a file or whatever. But it's just so handy. Take this little saw. It's got different gauges for each string. Uh, but that's not what the different gauges are for. Now some of you all will remember this from an old, very old video when I used it on something. And uh, several of you recognized it and knew what it was right off the bat. But that's not what I use it for. There you can see the, uh, the groove I just cut there. Really, really nice for that. What I do is, uh, I've got the old saddle in there, okay? And I just take my fingernail and put, you know, right in line with the old saddle slot. And then I let this, saw, this little saw right again my fingernail. And I can put that slot exactly where I want it every time. It really does a good job for this, but that's not what it's for. It's not what this little saw is for. So uh, let's see how many can remember. I should have saw that a little bit more with my fingernail in it. Uh, how many can remember me using it before and us talking about it, and some of y'all knew what it was? It's, you know, a little bit unorthodox I guess but hey it works man this thing's still very rough but take it some smooth sandpaper I'll take about uh, I'll take around I don't know 800 grit 1000 grit sandpaper and I'll make it really look nice I need to take a file for those bigger strings and uh, make them a little bit wider slot these gauges on this is not 
the same gauge as, as strings are. Anyways, I'll give you a hint on this. For those of you that don't know, let me back the camera off. Woo, woo, the boogity ball. A hint, 1032. Well, here she is, folks. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but it turned out really well. See the notches in it there. I think you can see them. It is absolutely pouring down the rain here right now. I think you can see that okay. The notches and the string grooves and all that jazz. So let's go get the instrument. Now. Here's one last look at the saddle. And if I can get you a shot in here now. You can see the glue setting up nicely. It's been uh, uh, probably a couple hours now since it was glued. There you can see it's uh, setting up quite nicely. we we'll start on the frets pretty soon. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, folks. Cheers to you. Peace out. Thanks for watching. I forgot to mention, I... I got this uh, radius off of the fretboard here, and it's a 12, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's a 12 inch radius, and I use this 12 inch block, there you go, with the dog hair on it, I used a 12 inch block while I had the, this saddle up here in this tiny vise, and I put a uh, 12 inch radius in the saddle here, well you can't see it, anyways, it's got a 12 inch radius in the saddle to match the 12 inch radius of the neck. Cheers. Thanks for watching. See you next time, folks. Bark. You want up here with me? Bark. Come on. Woo! Woo!